Hi everyone! Welcome back to Tabletop Worms. Today we're doing part one of a series on our deep dive into the world of dwarves and Pathfinder. Today we're looking at dwarves from Avistan. Part two will cover dwarves from the Mwangi Expanse and beyond. So grab your torches, sharpen your axes, and let's dive into the lore of the dwarves in Galarian. Dwarves are stout humanoid beings, typically a bit shorter than humans but much broader. They boast thick bones, tightly packed muscles, and unmatched stability. Interestingly, dwarves often weigh as much, if not more, than humans. Their appearances vary across Galarian with dwarves from Garund sporting deeply tanned and weathered beaten skin, while those in Avistan tend to be paler, especially those dwelling in the northern lands of the Lenorm Kings. Dwarves have a wide range of eye colors, with brown and gray being the most common. However, you might come across some dwarves with striking blue irises. What truly sets them apart, though, is their long, meticulously maintained beards, which hold deep cultural significance. It's considered a grave insult to a dwarven man if someone were to shave his beard. It's not just a personal offense, but an affront to his ancestors and family. Dwarves also like to maintain long, beautiful, beautiful hair, because, you know. However, it is important to note that there are clans of dwarves who do shave, most notably the Oat cast from the Osirian and the Makembe from the Mwangi Expanse. Dwarves prioritize functionality over style. Their clothing often features practical elements like special fasteners, reinforced seams, padding, or loops for holding tools and weapons. But rest assured, even in their practical attire, dwarves are never plain. Dwarves are known for their strong sense of justice and rarely forgive wrongdoings done to them or their families. Beneath their stern exteriors, dwarves value battle-tested friendships above all else. True friendship is more precious to them than all the gold and gems they may crave. While not all dwarves crave adventure, those that do often gravitate towards treasure hunting or mercenary work. Unlike most adventurers, they're not motivated solely by personal gain. They seek to uncover lost dwarven treasures, reclaim stolen lands, or amass wealth to fortify their citadels. According to dwarven mythos, dwarves were created by the god Torog and gained the nickname Torog's children. They once dwelled in Narvoth, the uppermost layer of the Darklands, where they fought against orcs, goblinoid races, and even among themselves for countless ages. The dwarven god Torag had given his children instructions. When the ground shook beneath their feet, they must migrate to the surface. This prophecy was known as the Quest for Sky. When Earthfall happened in negative 5293 AR, some dwarves saw this as a sign that the Quest for Sky should begin. This monumental undertaking led to a bitter civil war among their clans, eventually ending when General Targic violently united the clans in negative 5133 AR. As the dwarves ventured to the surface, their ancient enemies, the orcs, were pushed back onto the surface even faster, with first appearances happening in negative 5102 AR. The dwarves themselves finally emerged around negative 4987 AR. They established 10 magnificent fortified cities. These cities are known as Sky Citadels, and many boasted murals and engravings detailing the events of the quest for Sky. With General Targic at the helm, the dwarves created a new empire called Tar Targoth. Tar Targoth was a vast and ancient dwarven empire, which thrived for over 6,500 years. But as most empires do, they eventually fell to infighting and weakened the kingdom's power. The empire eventually fell to an overwhelming orc horde in 1551 AR. The Sky Citadels either fell or became isolated, leading to the dwarves viewing themselves as individual entities rather than members of a great empire. Of the ten Sky Citadels made, only five are occupied, three of which are occupied by dwarves. Dogenhold in the Mana Wastes, Yanderhof in Varicia, Cravenkus in the World's Edge Mountains of Taldor, Highhelm, the first Sky Citadel located in the Five King Mountains, and Cloudspire Citadel in the Mwangi Expanse. At the fall of Tar Targat, five separate dwarven nations were founded in Highhelm, each ruled by five brothers. Gardric I ruled Gardath in 1557 AR. Sagorn the Holy established the pious kingdom of Sagorak in 1559 AR. Dagon ruled the impenetrable kingdom of Dogdath in 1560 AR. Grak the Younger ruled the laborious kingdom of Gracodon in 1561 AR. And Tagric I ruled the everlasting kingdom of Tagoret in 1562 AR. Nine years after Tagric founded the everlasting kingdom, the first of many civil wars broke out. These wars lasted for over 700 years, before peace was finally achieved achieved with the Curse Accord in 2332 AR. This peace lasted for 160 years before orcs invaded the Dwarven Kingdoms once again. The only Sky Citadel to remain was Highhelm. In 3197 AR, Cotton the Mighty aimed to destroy the orcs and end their 700-year occupation in the Five King Mountains. After 82 years, the orcs were defeated at the Battle of Split Mist Pass. Cotton then founded the Empire of Tar Kadurm, with the capital city of Jernoshal in 3312 AR. For 500 years, Tar Kadurm flourished and survived as a major trade hub and cultural 
cultural center for the dwarves. Then came the rending. In 3980 AR, an active volcano by the name of Droskar's Crag erupted, destroying Jernoshal and its sister city of Raseri Canton in the process. Forced to leave their ancestral homelands, the dwarves became apathetic and indifferent to the kingdom of Tarkadurm, which collapsed soon thereafter. King Talric the Industrious tried to rekindle the spirit of his people, but his death in 4227 AR led to the fracturing of the dwarves once again. In 4369 AR, Audric Talric, King Talric's cousin and a cleric of the god Droskar, assassinated his cousin in an attempt to create a dwarven theocracy. This led to the Forge War, where those loyal to the true crown fought against the illegitimate leaders. Upon their failure, Ordric declared himself theocrat and all dwarves had to work in the name of Droskar. During this time, dwarven craftsmanship deteriorated, their art becoming merely adequate. Dwarven refugees fled the mountains to outlying settlements. The clergy could not keep hold of the other dwarves, and the theocracy eventually fell in 4466 AR. In the 250 years since, no dwarf has been able to unite the clans in the Five King Mountains. The four remaining Sky Citadels function as city-states as they wait for a new leader to emerge. Dwarves cherish tradition, but in a changing world where other races nations are on the rise, their culture is increasingly influenced by humans, gnomes, and even elves. This shift has raised concerns among older dwarves who fear the eventual extinction of their traditions. Still, dwarves prioritize crafting, fighting, and building fortifications, timeless pursuits that harken back to the days when Torog breathed life into the first dwarf. Dwarven society is traditionally divided into numerous clans, each associated with a specific gemstone cut into a unique shape. These stones are often set in clan members' armor or weapon hilts. Dwarves also forge special clan daggers to cut newborn's umbilical cords, a tradition passed down through the generations. In terms of language, most dwarves speak primarily dwarven, but they're also fluent in Taldane, the common language of the Inner Sea region. Dwarven uses a runic alphabet shared with Petron, formerly known as Teron, and is known for its harsh consonants and absence of the letters Q and X. Dwarves are deeply spiritual people, blending personal beliefs with ancestral and clan traditions. They honor their ancestors, founders of the clans, and city builders. Core virtues like craftsmanship, honor, friendship, and exploration hold immense importance in dwarven faith. Dwarven religions are characterized by a large number of ceremonial rites, often going far beyond what would be the minimum needed to venerate their deity. These rituals are often group activities and are particularly important for major events such as the passing of a great hero or the rise of a new king. Clan gemstones and mastercraft relics are used for ceremonial purposes during these rituals. Even in smaller dwarven communities, the rituals persist, albeit modified to fit the population in the area. Most dwarves venerate Torog, the god of the forge, above all others. However, they also hold great respect for deities like Caden, Gorum, and Abadar. Drosgar is a member of the dwarven pantheon as well, serving as the patron deity of the Duragar. Torog's teachings continue to guide dwarven culture to this day, as they believe their god will abandon them if they slack on their duties. There is a unique dwarven tradition called Galdrungar, the practice of carving one's personal rune and stone at the deepest point of a cave or tunnel they've explored. It's a testament to dwarves' obsession with leaving a mark and being remembered. Dwarves are known for their hard work, dedication, and toughness. They view other races who don't share these traits as frivolous or, at worst, weak and degenerate. Elves in particular are considered cowardly and weak for leaving Galarian for thousands of years after Earthfall. Half-orcs are often viewed with suspicion. Dwarven civilization is traditionally divided into three groups. The Grondaskan, living beneath the Earth, the Holtaskan, dwelling in the high mountains, and the Ergoskin, scattered on the surface lands. Each group has its unique characteristics and cultures, often shaped by their environments and experiences. In Galarian, dwarves can be found throughout Avastan and Garun. Dwarven equipment, as you may suspect, is well made and often holds a greater meaning that meets the eye. Dwarves receive clan daggers at birth, and selling such a gift is considered taboo. They also craft unique weapons, like the dwarven maul axe, a combination of a sledgehammer head and a sharp blade, and have their adaptation of the war axe and spear hafted Urgrosh. For armor, dwarves utilize stone plate, crafted from alchemically strengthened pieces of shale and basalt, ensuring both protection and durability. And there you have it! A comprehensive look at the dwarves of Galarian in the Pathfinder setting. Their history, culture, and traditions make them a truly captivating race in this rich and diverse world. If you found this journey through dwarven lore as fascinating as I did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell to see when our next video comes out. I'll see you all next time. May your day be fabulous and full of friends.